The first line in the documentation says it all for AWS CloudFormation. Speed up cloud provisioning with infrastructure as code. When we keep on doing the same things or when we try and improve things constantly, continuous integration and continuous delivery play a huge role in IT automation. And when I say this term infrastructure as code, think it in a way like you are treating your infrastructure, your deployment plan, your deployment blueprint, your strategy, your design as a form of code rather than manually deploying services or individual services. So I'll repeat this once again when I'm saying this term infrastructure as code, think it in a way like you're treating your infrastructure, your deployment plan, your deployment blueprint, your strategy, your designs as a form of code rather than manually deploying services or individual services. You can manage and provision stacks across multiple AWS accounts and AWS regions using the templates that you have for cloud formation. I know you might be thinking what is a stack? Just have some patience and keep watching. I'll tell you. And as you can see rightly below, we have mentioned the base of how cloud formation actually works. And these are the steps. The first one, infrastructure code commit. And this step that is basically the most important step is where we write the code for our deployment from scratch using the cloud formation template format. That is the language. So you can make use of JSON or YAML and we can actually save it with the extension of .template or .json or .txt or .yaml. And the second one is you upload the code to AWS S3 or Amazon S3. That is your template. So you can make use of the code stored in your local machine or else you can pull it from the S3 bucket. So the third step is once you have your code, you make use of cloud formation to execute your plan before which you will get an outlook on your topology of your design on the console based on which you can make the decision on whether you want to proceed further to execute it. For this, you can also use the console or you can make use of the SDK or else you can make it work with the CLI as well. And once you have made the decision, then comes the last step. That is where you see the magic unfold. The cloud formation will get your resources provisioned with the template that you have provided. And that's how it works. So step one, write code. Step two, upload to S3 or use it from your local file. The third step is execute on cloud formation. And the fourth step is get the resources. That's all, isn't it? It's very simple. So there are so many benefits of using cloud formation, but I have mentioned a few of them here. So the first one is to simplify infrastructure management. So this is very important because when we think of a scenario where you are handling a lot of traffic, it would be very cumbersome and problematic if you try changing configurations manually. So how will you determine the right provisioning strategy? It's not easy to do that on the fly, isn't it? But with cloud formation, you have already written the configuration and the scaling code and the condition and the condition to which you want the scaling to take place. And even though you feel it's not working properly, just make changes to the template. CloudFormation will deploy the Delta and won't disturb the existing deployment. Second one, quickly replicate your infrastructure. So this is also a very interesting one. Let's suppose I give you an example here. So we have an application deployment and that's on the test environment. So we want an exact replica to be created on our test environment. So how can we do that? So just use the template. You have all the information that you need. It's simple, isn't it? And that's why we can quickly replicate the infrastructure just by using the template itself. The third one is also very important. Easily control and track changes to your infrastructure. So tracking your resources is very important and that's very useful because if I ask you to give me details of your current deployment, you don't have to pull your design documentation. You can just share the template with me and the input file. I'll upload them. And let's suppose you want to see what instance types are being used. And if you wish to upscale them, you already know what the current configuration is. So this actually makes it very simple when you want to draw down information about your current deployment. So these are some of the benefits of using cloud formation. And I absolutely, I think I love it. So if you need to work with cloud formation, you need to understand these three concepts very clearly. The first one is template. The second one is stacks. And the third one is chain set. So let's start with template. So as I already told you in this step, that is basically the most important step is where you write the code for your deployment from scratch using the cloud formation template format. That is the language that we have. So you can make use of JSON or YAML and we actually can save it with the extension of dot template or dot JSON or dot TXT or dot YAML. And that is your template. 
and as i mentioned here the template acts like your blueprint for creating the aws resources for you it can also be a json yaml file extension like .yaml .json .txt and .templates can be as a part of that and you can also specify multiple resources in a single template and configure these resources to work together second one is stack imagine the burger it has layers isn't it like a patty and the lettuce and the cheese think in cloud terms your resources like ec2 im cloudwatch sts rds databases these will be like your technology or service stack which will form your application design so as i mentioned here you manage multiple resources as a single unit that is like having a stack at one place so you create update and delete a collection of resources by creating updating and deleting stacks not only one but multiple resources at once so for example having a ec2 or auto scaling group cloudwatch rds at one place and the third one is chain set so this is also a very important one so now that you have your template you are ready for your deployment and you execute it and you get your application or the infrastructure deployed but what if you want to make changes to that yes you can make changes by rolling out chain sets remember that if you want to make changes you can roll out chain sets which act as a delta for your application deployment let's suppose you want to add a new service or you want to increase or decrease service configuration you can do that as well so you basically generate a chain set when you want to make changes to the resources it acts like a summary for your proposed changes so you see what you are changing before it's being implemented on your cloud formation it will show you the changes that you have and then you can decide if you wish to deploy it so i hope you got the points here the first one is template the next one is stack or the resource stack and then you have your chain set so let's understand the working of cloud formation carefully once again so here let's suppose i want to create a pool of ec2 instances and have a load balancer attached to it with the asg in place so first i can write the template or use an existing template that i have where i mentioned the instance type the storage i want how many instances should be in the auto scaling group and we will create a elastic load balancer and attach the targets next we will save the template in s3 to keep it secure so that it does not get changed or deleted or lost somewhere and then we execute it using cloud formation service and if we wish to make changes then we write a chain set for that and once we execute it using cloud formation it will provision the resources and will create a ec2 instance or a pool of ec2 instances and it will attach a load balancer to it and it will have a auto scaling group in place so it will do that automatically for us and i don't have to manually do that one by one so i can just write everything in the template and once i feed that to aws cloud formation it will give me the total output so here is one example as well for the template for cloud formation to create ec2 instance so we have the aws template format version 2010.0909 this is one of the versions that we already have here and the description is let's create an ec2 instance so here we are trying to read the template so please pay full attention the next one is resources so resources key is very important where you actually mention what is the resource that you're going to create so the resource name that i have given is my ec2 instance there's the first and the only resource we have here so i hope you guys are aware of yaml there's a template written in yaml so if you are not aware of yaml there is a video in my channel explaining how yaml works you can check that out as well and the type of resource is aws ec2 instance you can find these resource names in the documentation for the supported services in aws for cloud formation not to be worried about that you will get the name of any of the services that you want to use in cloud formation then we mentioned the properties of the resources that we want so the resource name is my ec2 instance and what is the property i'll mention it under the properties key so the first is the ami that i want to use the image id so ami name i have to provide the ami name the second one is the instance type what type of instance that i want i want t2.micro t2.small t2.large whatever i want i can mention that third one is the sh key so for my ssh or port number 22 i have to use a key that i can log in with using ssh so ec2 hyphen key is my key that i've used and then i have mentioned the storage so next is storage that is the evs volume mount so the key that i've used for ebs is block device mapping and under that we have the device name slash dev slash sdm then ebs configuration is basically your volume type that is io1 iops is 200 delete on termination is false and volume size is 20 gb 
so that's how we read a simple template and once we write a template like this we simply upload it to cloud formation and to s3 and execute it using cloud formation so once you have written this template this type of template you can simply upload to s3 and you can make its execution from cloud formation as well so it will provision you the ec2 instance that you have written the template for so now let's see what happens if we want to make changes to the existing deployment made using cloud formation so in our existing deployment we create ec2 instance using cloud formation now our requirement changed and we want to have elastic ip attached to it so here the best thing is you don't need to do anything manually we keep the existing template and then we create our chain set that is the proposed change that we want to make so what does the chain set contain so it has the resource name that is my ip or my eip that is my elastic ip and the resource type is elastic ip that i have here so the type is aws colon ec2 colon eip so that is the resource type for elastic ips and in the properties i have mentioned instance id that is the reference for my ec2 instance so it has to attach to that particular instance isn't it so we have to give a reference id for that to what instance it is going to be attached to so the instance id that i have is my instance id so i have given it here and once you've done this once you've written this template that's all commit your chain set see the changes and execute it no more changes are required and that's the beauty of infrastructure as code